my black brothers and sisters, all of you. I want you to, I want you to hug a white person. Hey everybody, this is Michael Antonio, and I have a very serious message for everyone in light of the uh, events that have just taken place in America uh, over the racial tension, this issue of NFL players kneeling down and sitting down for the national anthem of our great nation, America. I just wanted to, uh, <clears throat> instead of getting into maybe my specific opinion right away, I, uh, I did want to say, I'm going to tell a story. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to tell a true story about my life. Something happened to me, and it kind of sheds light on what's happening today. It kind of tells you that some of these people are not being told the truth. There's something more sinister going on in America, and we have to put a stop to it. It's up to me, and it's up to you. We've got to put a stop to this because it's getting ugly. So let me just get right into the story. I'm going to tell you what happened to me a few years back. I was a manager, and I was in charge of hiring uh, new employees. Now, to say I was in charge, I really wasn't. I was not given the ultimate authority to hire unless the employee met a certain criteria. And that criteria, believe it or not, was set, uh, it was set by my bosses, but it was really, it was really set by the federal government. In effect, if the bosses, uh, if the bosses wanted to get some special tax breaks, they would do what the government, uh, you know, they would uh, basically do what the government said for them to do. That's the way it worked. This is what I was told. <clears throat> the government gave us a testing, a little test that I had to administer to my prospective employees. And if they failed that test, if they did not meet the eligibility requirements, I was not allowed to hire them. That's what my employer told me. And the criteria was essentially this. It was a list of questions, maybe a page of questions. I saw the questions, I knew what they were. And generally, it comes, it boils down to this. If you did not meet the eligibility requirement of certain minority status, you were not eligible to give a tax break to your company, to this company, uh, if you worked for them. And so essentially my boss told me, if they don't pass that test, you don't hire them. It's as simple as that. So that's how it worked. I would uh, I would get the answers from, uh, you know, the, the, the prospective employee would, would uh, take the little test, they would give me the answers. I would call a phone number to the federal government and I would answer those questions for them and then they would tell me over the phone whether this prospective employee met the eligibility requirements. Now I'll just tell you that, uh, you know, I, I, had to, I have to tell you that almost all of my employees were minorities as a result. Only one was not and the only reason why he was not was because he worked there before I got there. I don't know how they set eligibility before that time or if the test was even available at that time. But it is, it's is—it's—it's something called affirmative action. I don't know if it's even going on now. I'm not in that same uh, management job, so I don't know what they do now. But I will say this, that if, if, if there are people kneeling down now in the NFL, players who make millions of dollars, they're telling me there is racial injustice happening on this, you know, in this country. I will tell them that, in my experience, I'm not seeing that. I see pockets of injustice. I see pockets of racist behavior on all sides. Because that's never going to change. You're not going to be able to change that. People's attitudes are going to be people's attitudes. You can't change that. You can't even legislate that. We've done a lot of legislating 
in the last 40 or 50 years. And it's done a lot of good, but it's also done some bad. So what I will say to these people, they've been lied to. They have been told that they are being racially discriminated against. Maybe they've had people say things to them and do things to them that were racially unjust. And you know what? I'm sorry for that. I, I can't answer that specifically because I didn't see that happen to them. And I'm sorry that it happened and uh, I wish that it did not. But I will say, if you're, if you're looking for widespread racial injustice, it's just simply not there. I'm going to tell you guys, it's not there. And I'm sorry to tell you that, but it's not happening. Uh, but you know, hey, I'm, I'm sorry. I, I think what's happening here is that you have a, a more insidious, uh, you have a more insidious uh, war taking place from people higher up, much higher up, who have brainwashed people into believing in the black community that this is the real crisis. You have racist people running around harming you, and now we have a racist president who's trying to destroy us and, and, and harm our, our movement even further. And that's not true at all. And so what they're trying to do is they're trying to destroy Donald Trump. Well, the problem with that is you have a lot of people that voted for Donald Trump. Half this country voted for him. And I would dare say many of the people who did not vote wanted to vote for him. But for whatever reason, maybe they were just too afraid or they did not. I can't answer why they didn't, but I think I will tell you that most of America stands behind Donald Trump. That is a fact. That's a fact. You can take that to the bank. So you're not going to win this war by attacking Donald Trump immediately after Donald Trump makes a statement calling people who disrespected our flag, you know, uh, SOBs. You know what? If you disrespect our flag, I don't think that's such a bad moniker for you. You shouldn't be doing that. I don't care if it's your freedom of speech. It might be your freedom of speech, but it's still a pretty, it's a pretty rotten thing to do. It's a pretty disrespectful and rude thing to do uh, for the, you know, the, the thing that represents the freedoms that you do have, and you do have those freedoms. And to illustrate the freedoms, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you a list. This list is the top 10 male athletes by pay in the world. And I will tell you, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to list them for you. Five of those people in the world, five of the top paid athletes in the world are black athletes. And again, I think that's a wonderful thing. If, if they achieve that level, it's because they earned it. And I applaud them for that. And I'm so glad that affirmative action was not used to pay these athletes. I'm so glad that they did it by achievement. Because let me tell you, how awful would it be if some of the top athletes uh, were not really the top athletes. They were people who were just uh, put in that position because, you know, maybe they were white instead of black. Well, there's not enough white people in sports, so we got to put more white people in there. I don't agree with that. I don't want that. I don't want to see that. I also don't want to see people getting on their knees and sitting down and stretching and showing disrespect to the symbol of the very freedom that you have. To me, that is rude. But anyway, let me list them for you. I'm going to list the number one paid, top paid athlete in the world is Cristiano Ronaldo. The number two top paid athlete in the world is LeBron James. Now I will mention, we're going to mention the rest, I will say that four of those five, four of those five black athletes in the top ten are Americans. So that's very important to know. Isn't that something? So now we have number two, LeBron James. Number three, Lionel Messi. Number four, Roger Federer. Great tennis player. Number five, the great Kevin Durant. He's a fantastic, incredible athlete. And he's a black American. Number six, Andrew Luck. Number seven, Rory McIlroy. Number eight, Stephen Curry. Good old Stephen Curry. Again, an incredible basketball player. You know, he deserves the position that he has and the money he's making. He's done an incredible job. I enjoy watching him play, even though he disrespected my president. Number nine, James Harden. Again, another black athlete who is American. 
Awesome. Then, of course, we have number 10, Lewis Hamilton. So there you have it, the top 10 male athletes in the world by pay. And four of those are black Americans. Considering that less than 14% of the American population is black, I would say that a 40%, that's 40% of the world's population are the top, you know, 40% of the top paid male athletes are black American males. Wow. If that doesn't shatter, you know, that shatters the entire curve for, you know, the number of black citizens in this country. Again, less than 14%. And then you have over 40% of uh, black American males being in the top. The top of the pay for athletes in the world. Incredible. And again, they, they earned it. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna challenge their notion. Uh, the notion that they should not be. I, I believe they should be, and that's the point I'm making. If you're a top athlete, if, if somebody's willing to pay you that, then hey, I'm all for it. I don't care. If they're willing to pay you, but remember, there is a flip side to that. The flip side is, if fans are willing to turn you off and stop watching you and stop buying your merchandise, because you disrespected them, then you got to take that too. you got to take it. And if you want to continue to be the way you are, then guess what? You're probably going to continue to lose money. A lot of it. And that's our hate. Either way, it's your choice. That's what I'm saying. It's your choice. So I just wanted to say before I go, if you want to read my articles about all these things going on, I want you to go to my Facebook page under Michael Antonio Luquette, last name spelled L-U-C-K-E-T-T-E. -E. You can find me on uh, YouTube under Michael Antonio. You can also find me on Twitter at Michael Antonio, M-I-C-H-A-E-L-A-N-T-O-N-I-O. -E you can find me there. So there's so many places you can get to me there. Read my articles on cscmediagroupus.com. And I'm going to tell you, uh, there's a lot of untruth being told today. And we got to come together. I, this is my last, this is kind of my last message to everyone. We got to come together. We cannot live like this any longer as a nation. And that means, guys, if you're an athlete in the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, soccer, the NHL, I don't care where you're playing ball. You have got to come together with American citizens and respect the flag. You've got to stand up proudly and you've got to salute and you've got to put your hand over that heart and you've got to recite the national anthem and you've got to feel pride for America. You've got to start doing it. If you've got a problem with anything else, you've got to first of all identify the problem. The black community has a big problem. And it's black-on-black -black crime in our inner cities. You have gangs killing other gang members. You have a lot of bad stuff going on. I'm going to tell you right now, you got to fix that. That's your big problem. And you need to get together with leaders from the black community and leaders from all communities, because we all care. We all have a hand in this. So let's tackle it together, but let's not sow division. Whoever started all this, whoever came up with the idea, to kneel down and to show disrespect to our flag and to the honor of all those men and women who risked their lives and gave their lives for your freedoms. I'm gonna tell you right now, man, you gotta you gotta get away from that. You gotta run from that. Run from that disrespect. Repent. Repent to God. Repent to your fellow Americans and say, I'm sorry, I didn't know what I was doing. And I am sorry. I want to do what's right. I care about you and I care about America, because we should care about each other. And that's one other thing I wanted to say before I go. Here is a useful exercise for all individuals, really. But I want to talk to my black brethren. I want to talk to my black brothers. And I want to let you know that I love you. And I love all Americans. I really do. I don't like seeing this. I want to watch a game. I want to turn on sports 
my sporting event, and I want to enjoy the game, and I want to talk to my buddies about it, and talk trash about the other team that I don't like, whatever, it's all just, it's all in fun, and we have a good time with it, I can't even have a good time with it anymore, because every time I turn it on, I see this, I see the division, it's not helping, you're not going to change anything by kneeling down, you're not. You're making so many people angry. You know how many people have given up the sport this week alone? And it's just going to get worse and worse and worse until there's nothing left. I don't want to see that happen. I want to see I want to see togetherness. I don't want to see division anymore. So I'm talking to my black brothers out there. I love you guys, man. And I'm telling you right now, give some love to everybody. Love your white brethren, man. Love us all because we care about you. We don't hate you. There's nothing but love here. Do you understand that? So I'm going to tell you right now, and I'm all, and this is in all seriousness. I'm going to tell you right now. I mean, completely and totally serious. My black brothers and sisters, all of you. I want you to. I want you to hug a white person this week. I want you to. If you find a white person, I want you to go hug them and tell them I love you. I love you. It doesn't matter if you disagree with them. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, because I'm going to find me. I'm going to find me a black brother. And I'm going to hug him this week. I'm going to say, I love you. Because I do. I love everybody. Bye. Hey, guys. If you want more great content from me, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. Come on. What are you waiting for? Time for you to go